Hey Eve, I wanted to answer a couple questions that you had posted in the storyline forum regarding hotspot questions. And you're absolutely right that when you create a hotspot question, by default, the learner's cursor is going to look like that pointing hand no matter where they hover on your slide or your image. Um, but you had also asked if there's a reason why we would have incorrect hotspots when the learner's going to get the same incorrect feedback regardless of where they click, unless they, of course, click the correct spot. And there is actually, what you can do is create specialized feedback for any hotspot. So let me show you how. Uh, right now I'm looking at a slide that's just a regular old slide with this image on it. It's not a question slide yet. I'm going to convert it to a question slide in a second. But first I'm going to go up to my insert tab and choose hotspot and I'm going to draw a couple hotspots on this image. So here's a rectangle and I'm also going to draw an oval over here. Okay. And now up on my insert tab here I'm going to choose convert to free form and then select hotspot and then click OK. And now in my question editor that pops up, both of those choices are showing up as red, as incorrect, but what I can do is come over here and um, tell Storyline which of these is going to be considered the correct answer. So let's just say that the rectangle one is going to be right, so we'll mark that and it turns green. And right now, the behavior would still hold that if the learner clicks anywhere in the white space or anywhere on the red hotspot, they would get the same feedback regardless. But what we can do is come up to the feedback dropdown and say feedback by choice. And what that does is it opens up these little feedback fields here where we can specify um, customized feedback for any choice. So let's just say for this incorrect um, answer where the oval is, we'll say, no, that is the guitar body. And for the correct answer, we'll say, yes, good job. Okay, and now if we hit save and close and we come down to our layers here, you'll see that there's actually two incorrect feedback layers. This one is just the regular old default feedback that the learner will get no matter where they click outside of any hotspot. But if we look at this one, this is the one that is customized for that, you know, um, oval hotspot that we created. So now if we preview this and take a look at how it would behave, if we click off here in the white space, we're just going to get the default feedback message, right? But if we replay this and we click on this part of the guitar where we put the oval and we hit submit, then we're going to get that customized message that we saw earlier. And you can do this for as many hotspots as you want. Now, if you don't want the pointing hand to appear um, anywhere outside of the hotspots, what I would recommend doing is instead using a different question type. Um, what you can do is um, create your own shapes to use kind of like hotspots and use a pick one question type. So let me show you how you can do that. I'm going to come up here to my shapes menu. And again, we're working with just a regular old slide right now. There's nothing um, special about this. It's just a slide with a quest or with a uh, image on it. It's not a question yet. I'm going to draw a rectangle here and I'm also going to draw a oval. Where's my oval? There it is an oval here. And we're going to use these as our two um, places that the learner can click. And we'll make these invisible in just a second, but I'm going to leave them as is for now. So on the Insert tab, what we're going to do is choose Convert to Freeform, and then this time we're going to select Pick 1, and then say OK. And the question editor pops up. It's a lot like the other one, but here we have to identify the choices. So one choice is the rectangle, and the other choice is the oval. And again, let's consider the rectangle the correct choice. OK, so we'll mark that correct and then we'll come back here and hit save and close. So here's my incorrect feedback layers down here. That looks good. Now one thing that's kind of interesting is that down here in the states panel for my shapes, we've now got this selected state that Storyline created for us and both look the same. It's got this little blue glow around them. Now, If you don't want that blue glow to appear, here's what we're going to do. Um, I think it is helpful to have a selected state just so that learners see that they actually selected something. But let's go ahead and first get rid of the fill and then we'll worry about the glow as well. So I'm going to change my transparency here to 100% and then we're going to get rid of the line and hit close and now if we select these uh, either of these shapes there's nothing in the selected state but what I would do is say edit states and then go to my selected state and add maybe a check mark or something just to indicate to the learner that they've actually selected it, right? So I've done it to that one and I'm just going to use the format painter here to paint it to my other one. So now if we preview this, my cursor's not the hand until I hover over one of those items, right? So it turns into the hand and then when I click, it's going to show which one I've selected. So hopefully that gives you some ideas for ways that you can uh, create the kind of question that you've got in mind.